but she is, she's very gifted, she's very intuitive, she's very psychic, okay? okay. And um, um, that's why I was teasing her when I met her, and I said, oh, so you're keeping your powers under wrap, are you, you know? Mm. Um, but uh, she's someone who um, silently with, uh, the, uh, when's her birthday? Uh, December oh, 10th. Yeah, she's December 10th. And And um, it's funny because her, uh, she must be on the, the, the borderline, she must have Scorpio in her chart somewhere very prominently because she does a lot of her work incognito. Scorpios love to do that. They love to like not be in the spotlight. They want to do it from behind the scenes and you know be the observer versus, you know, unless you're Julia Roberts and she's mm. a Scorpio that's, yeah. you know, ta-da, take me, I'm, um, I'm in the spotlight. But she still does Julia Roberts, all her charity work, all her good things and good works uh, behind the scenes. Okay, mm -hmm. Scorpios are just lover, uh, uh, lovers of life and dreams come true. They're, they're, um, I love them because they always want to assist others in manifesting what they need. And your aunt is, has that energy. It's like she wants to help you manifest what you want in your life. You know? Agreed. And um, uh, talk about manifestation, just ask your wife. She can make anything appear. Okay? I know. Um, uh, she's the best. <laughs> um, so you've got, you know, the dynamic duo there on your side, mm -hmm. you know. Forget about the ch eyewitness news on your side. You have the mm -hmm. angels, earth angels mm -hmm. on your side. And I think you've uh, finally exhaled and accepted the, a lot of that. We're used to fight it a lot where, you know, you think your wife is crazy or your aunt was crazy or it's like, pff, does not compute, it's not logical, left-brained, mm -hmm. linear. And, but now you're, you're embracing it and realizing that there's a, a synergy to it that um, you can understand and feel. Right. Yeah. So um, I think that, um, and also with your dreams, they want me to ask you about your dreams. Have they been uh, kicking in and becoming like very... Uh, clairvoyant or have you been dreaming something and then deja vuing two days later because you wait a minute I just had this dream well I dream a lot yeah but um, it's usually past it's it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm in this kick now of dreaming about uh, things that happened before but it but they're different you know like they're different settings people that I knew that have passed on my father a lot Right. Um, well, you know those are visitations. Right. Okay. Right. So um, they're really with you, mm -hmm. and w they're just uh, sapiches would sing, trying to get a message to you. Right. Um, and it's palpable because when you wake up from those dreams, don't you like, like have to check out, look around, check out where am I? Right. 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 Yeah, that's how you know they're visitation dreams. Sure. Um, our loved ones, and they do it uh, when they pass. Um, they want to do it like with immediacy, but they're very uh, loving and careful about your emotional ability to receive it, to accept it, mm -hmm. um, and um, the grieving process. They understand and want to respect that. Right. Okay, so that's why there um, there are some people who will get uh, oh well, gee, you know, my my loved one passed away, and I still haven't. They haven't contacted me yet. I right. haven't thought of you know dreamt about them or. Uh, had an experience and they start getting anxiety attacks over it. And I say, you know, I see Ta Italians would say, piano, piano, slowly, slowly. Have, have, uh, uh, have faith in everything is at the right time for the right reason. Right. Okay? Correct. And I think you with your dad, the reason that it's really coming in loud and clear is because he knows you're ready to hear it. And you've, you've, uh, uh, you're not as uh, uptight white as you used to be, mm -hmm. and you're like not. Um, who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters. Yeah. You know, you're not. You're not um, afraid of it anymore. Right. Okay. And so it, now he knows you, that you're open. So now it's like fast and furious. All right, I'm just gonna, you know, uh, come to you all the time now, mm -hmm. and let you know that I'm here, and let you know um, how much um, I'm proud of you, and that I love you, and uh, please don't be frustrated with the rest of the crazy dysfunctional family. Okay, I think the thing that um, your father's trying to uh, protect you about is that you know you can't control other people's actions. We can only control our reactions uh, to them. And he says you just need to take a powder. He said so, and that's an odd expression for a man to use, but that's what he said. 
right? right. So it's like, uh, I need a break. I'm going to go to the powder room, you know? Right. Um, that's what your dad says you need. You uh, um, don't, um, he, said, he said, don't associate with them often, mm -hmm. okay? And then you can handle it without going crazy. Talk. Just listen, don't talk. Right. <laughs> Zip gotcha. it. Yeah. And for an Aries, that's very difficult, mm. you know, because right. you want to fix things. Aries um, always uh, are very giving. They're like, well, let me help. Let me, you know, and sometimes it's not our job, and right. it's God's way of saying, I'm, I'm on the job. Take a step back. Zip it. And let it be what it needs to be. Okay? And um, you're going to see a, a major, a major... Um, change like somebody's going on the wagon and I don't know that they're going to join Alcoholics Anonymous or anything like that but they're, they're definitely going to um, uh, cease and desist with the uh, an alcohol issue um, it's a gentleman that looks to me as if he's in his 60s okay um, I don't feel him living in, in, in I think he's living in Virginia okay Okay, um, and um, I want to say that when you hear this, you're you're just going to get, ah, oh, thank you God, you know, like, and but your dad's taking credit for it. It's like he wants you to know that um, he's uh, working on all the helping everybody with the issues that you're concerned that you know they're going to do themselves in or you know that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, now also, there's something to do. Is there a cousin that really just? Um, is it on your last nerve that lives in New Jersey? Do you have a cousin that lives in New Jersey? No. Not that I recall. No. Huh. Your dad's talking about a cousin. It looks like New Jersey to me. Um, what's his name? Roy? Do you know anybody named Roy? I have a cousin? Did your dad have a cousin by the name of Roy? No. Not that I, not that I know of. Let's put it that way. Because you know what he's showing me? And I don't know, maybe it could be my um, interpretation isn't, um, I'm not interpreting it right, but I see Paul Newman in the role of Judge Roy Bean. So it could be somebody that was um, a, a judge or um, in, in the law or a police officer or a judge or um, Roy Bean, and he was the hanging judge. So this was somebody that um, definitely had no patience or... Uh, milk of human kindness for too many people. Um, and maybe it was just somebody that got on your father's last nerve. I don't know. But there's always a reason yeah. that they give these stories. So I'll file it. File it, yeah. and, and we'll get back to that. Um, also, there's something to do with a... Um, something to do with a new car situation. Okay. Um, it, is your son talking about getting a new Jeep? No, but my wife is. <laughs> oh, it's for your wife. Okay. Um, the fix is in, Linda. Yeah. The new Jeep is coming. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm seeing a new Jeep. We were talk well, we've been talking about her next car. That's what she wants. So. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. totally, um, Linda, God bless, yeah. carefree, you know, hair flying yeah. in the wind, yeah. you know. When I eat a York pepper and patty, huh? Ah, <laughs> you know? And um, her, her just doing her thing, God bless free spirit that she is. <laughs> and um, so, and you're going to get a great deal. So that's, that's always awesome. Okay. Well, I'll bring her and we will get a good <laughs> <laughs> Now, I think we got somebody waiting on the phone. I hear the phone's in there. No. Okay. Um, people, if you're watching and you want to call in, I mean, you know, the, you know the drill, you know the number, 516-629-3705 or 3715. This is like really unusual. Your father must be putting the, the uh, gaguts on everybody trying to call in because he <laughs> wants to focus in on you. What are wow. Hello? Hello. Hi, this is Grace. Who's, who am I speaking with? Hi, Grace. This is Kim. How are you? Hey, Kim. Great. When's your birthday, babe? November 4th. <gasps> Scorpio. Genuflect, genuflect. Okay. Um, what, how can I help you tonight, Kim? Well, um, I recently lost my father, and I'm just calling to see if he's okay. Oh, sweetheart. Um, uh, did his heart give out? Was this congestive heart failure? We really don't know. You know, they really can't answer that question. Okay, I believe that that answer will be given to you, that it was congestive heart failure, and that's why he made his transition and uh, his body gave out, all right? Okay. Uh, but he looks really young to me, honey. Was he only in his 70s? Yeah, he's in his 
Yes. Yeah. 71. Yeah. He's very young and in his 70s and he says, you know, he said uh, it was like a light switch, like uh, one minute he was here, the next minute he was there. Is, wow. what, is what I'm hearing. He didn't suffer. And part of um, what's been driving you crazy, honey, is like, I hope he didn't, you know, he wasn't suffering, he didn't hurt, it wasn't painful. Right. Okay. Um, he wants you to know that he's, um, he's, he's fine. He's going to let you know personally because uh, he says he was really close with you. Uh, are you one of four? Yes. Okay. Because uh, I just want to make sure it's him I'm talking to. He says, you're one of four, but you were kind of like the, the maven. You were the go-to girl. <laughs> Is this true? Um, kind of, yeah. Kind yeah. of, in a way. Well, because you're a Scorpio, everybody. You got the power, honey. That's why. Yeah, we, we run the show. <laughs> Absolutely, and rightfully so. So um, he wants you to know that he's very grateful that you're kind of uh, being the, uh, uh, the counselor for everyone. And um, he, he will be th there for you. Uh, he's going to be there f for you to let you know personally that he's doing great. He's going to come to you in a dream, but also something to do with being out in a garden. And I keep se seeing stargazer lilies. Hmm. Okay? And you're going to be somewhere, and it kind of looks like Hawaii to me. Did you ever want to go to Hawaii? Of course. Okay. He shows me you in Hawaii and the hibiscus and the, and the stargazer lilies and um, uh, like this hummingbird is going to come and uh, like be right by your face and almost like kiss your cheek. That's going to be your father. Okay? Okay. And um, uh, this trip to Hawaii, he says, is, is not a long f uh, away. He says within two years. Hmm. All right? Okay. All right. So um, he's sending you love, and he likes that you talk to him. Do you talk to him out loud? In my head, not really out loud. Okay. Well, for him, it's out loud. Yeah. Um, and he says, keep that up. He loves you. And hold on, sweetheart. Don't go away. If you're watching live, well, you know, we do the show in two parts, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Um, time, time just flies by when we do this show, right, Bob? Uh, it does. Does it, it feel like we've been here a half hour? No. no. So uh, we love you. Uh, if you're watching live, keep, keep tuned in. We'll get right back to you. If you're, you're not, you're watching the rebroadcasted show, you know what to do. Shoot me that email. And as always, it's all about being in the positive zone. Thanks a lot for watching, for tuning in, and calling in. Thank you. <laughs> whoop, whoop.